someone read the question out loud? Okay, all set, I'll read it. Time. Is it like a line that extends itself into space? If it is a line, or like a line, is it continuous? Or if it were, right, if it were not, it would be discontinuous. But <laughs> if it were, uh, there'd be gaps in it. How terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Holes in it. Distressing. For certainly, would you not agree, in principle, uh, uh, miss, 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 uh, uh, can anything come out of nothing, if it was truly nothing? Can nothing come out of nothing? No, can anything, can come, out anything. Can anything come out of nothing? If it's truly nothing. If, it, if, an, if nothing is truly nothing? It was a, if you found Sorry. a... Sorry. If there ever was a pure nothing, could anything come out of it? No. Oh, good, good. By the way, then, if there ever was nothing, there would continue to be nothing. Considering time. Or nothing can, for something cannot come out of nothing. Right? Is nothing invisible? I just wondered. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah, we need some help. Let's go right ahead. How would you answer this? Is it like a line? Is time like a line? I don't think so. Well, what is it like? Like a spiral. Like a power? A spiral. A spiral. That's a line. Well, what's a line? It's a line, isn't it? Spiral? Isn't it well, a then line? it's like a line. Is it continuous? Or are there uh, holes in it? Let's take a look. That spiral has holes in it. Okay. <laughs> Go along with that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay, okay. I just want to make sure. Okay, I just wanted to wait some time. My question is, are we aiming towards the third hypothesis? Is that where we're going? Third what? Hypothesis? Of, uh, hypothesis. Hey, that's a good idea. Let's get into the third hypothesis. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Well, but I mean, that kind of... I just, I just wanted to take some time off. Oh, that's all. This probably has nothing or something to nothing do with it. Nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, we need a couple of readers. What do you say? Here. Thank you much. Where is it? Okay, how about a couple of readers? Oh, we. Both of us. Yeah, we ended up. How many people? Three people said I'll read. Gina and I and who? I heard one more. All we need is two. Bradley? No, I think that's it. One or two people said that. I thought I heard. Okay. All right. Who's an echo? Jump in. Okay. Okay. Jump in. Page. Low below, bird. Thomas Thomas. Two fifty-five and low. One fifty-five. Well, they're into the yeah, low. Okay, low. What? It's 
third is what? What that's on page 255? Two fifty-five. Hmm. Okay. Yo. Let us make another fresh start. In what direction? We say that the one partakes of being because it is. Yes. And for that reason, the one, because it is, was found to be many. Yes. Well then, will the one, which we say partakes of being, if we form a mental conception of it, That's alone it. by itself, yes. without that, of which we say it partakes, be found to be only one or many? One, I should say. Just let us see. Must not the being of one be one thing, and one itself another, if the one is not being, but considered as one, partakes of being? This isn't it. This isn't the By third. The way, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, this is the we, third beginning just for, of two. Let's go. Yeah. 155, E, page 297. Is that fair? Yeah. Oh, yeah. it is more than fair. Okay. Let us discuss the matter once more, and for the third time. Okay. If the one is such as we have described it, being both one and many, and neither one nor many, and partakes of time, must it not, because one is, sometimes partake of being, and again because one is not, sometimes not partake of being? Yes, it must. And can, yes. one, and can one, when it partakes of being, not partake of it, or partake of it when it does not partake of it? Nope, it can't. <laughs> then it partakes at one time and does not partake at another. But that is the only way in which it can partake and not partake of the same thing. True. And okay. Is okay, just for a moment. Okay. You have to see the word partaking in this. Right? You have to see the word partaking. Right. So just, if you don't mind, let's do it once more, okay, just to make sure we see it. Go ahead. And I have an extra load here, if somebody wants it. Let's just, let's, let's someone You're ready? Sure. Yeah. 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 Let us discuss the matter once more, and for the third time. If the one is such as we have described it, being both one and many, and neither one nor many, and partakes of time, there's, must... There is a partaking. A partaking. Go ahead. Must it not, because one is, sometimes partake of being, and again, because one is not, sometimes not partake of being? Yes, it must. And can one, when it partakes of being, not partake of it? Or partake of it when it does not partake of it? No, it cannot. Then it partakes at one time and does not partake at another. For that is the only way in which it can partake and not partake of the same thing. True. And is there not also a time when it assumes being and when it gives it up? How can it sometimes have and sometimes not have the same thing? Unless it receives it at some time and again loses it. Get, uh, receives, gives up, right? Takes, gives up. Right. Hmm. Something curious is going on. Right. Uh, there is uh, no way at all. How can it be? No other way. But would you not say that receiving existence is generation or becoming? Yes. And losing existence is destruction? Certainly. The one then, as it appears, since it receives and loses existence, is generated and destroyed. Inevitably. 
and being one and many, and being generated and destroyed, when it becomes, when it becomes one, its existence as many is destroyed, and when it becomes many, its existence as one is destroyed. Is it not? Sure. And in becoming one and many, must it not be separated and combined? Inevitably. And when it becomes like and unlike, it must be assimilated and dissimilated. Yes. And when it becomes greater and smaller and equal, it must be increased and diminished and equalized. Yes. And when being in motion comes to rest, and when being at rest it changes to motion, it must itself be in no time at all. How is that? It is impossible for it to be previously at rest and afterwards in motion, or previously in motion and afterwards at rest, without changing. Oh, of course. And there is no time in which anything can be at once neither in motion nor at rest. Oh, there is. That's the key sentence. Don't lose it. Okay, do it again. And, and there is no, no time, time in which anything can be at once neither in motion nor at rest. Everything is in one, one or, or the other. other. There is no time that's other than expressing itself mm -hmm. in terms of the one or the other. Right, okay. Is that right? Yep. Rest and motion. Everything is either in rest or motion. There's no time in which you can say it's in something other than either rest or motion. Is that right? That's what it's saying. Here comes the cascade. Everything follows on. And certainly it cannot change without changing. I should say not. Then when does it change? For it does not change when it is at rest, mm -hmm. or when it is in motion, mm -hmm. or when it is in time. Right. No, it does not. Does this strange thing then exist, in which it would be at the moment when it changes? Hmm. What sort of thing is that? The instant. For the instant seems to indicate a something from which there is a change in one direction or the other. For it does not change from rest while it is still at rest, nor from motion while it is still moving. Yet there is this strange, instantaneous nature, something interposed between motion and rest, not existing in any time. And into this and out of this, that, that which is in motion changes into rest, and that which is at rest changes into motion. Yes, that makes sense. That must be so then the one, if it is at rest and in motion, must change in either direction, each direction. For that is the only, so, then the one, if it is at rest and in motion, must change in each direction. For that is the only way in which it can do both. But in changing, it changes instantaneously. And when it changes, it can be in no time. And at that instant, it will be neither in motion nor at rest. <coughs> no. And will the case not be the same in relation to other changes? When it changes from being to destruction, or from not being to becoming, does it not pass into an intermediate stage between certain forms of motion and rest? And so all that, change must pass through these intermediary periods. Oh. 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 So that it neither is nor is not, neither comes into being nor is destroyed. Yes, so it appears. in some curious way. As long as it's rest, it's going to remain in rest. How does it ever get in motion? Of course it does, but... Uh, what are we doing? See, we're trying to understand something. 
Not that we disagree that motion takes place and things that are at rest finally in motion and motion they get to be at rest. That's not the issue. The issue is whether we can understand that. That's the issue. Is this kind of pointing at our friend Zeus? Pardon me? At our friend Zeus and what is going on there like we were discussing last week? That when he's creating the cosmos, it is an association of this discussion of time because for Zeus, time does not exist. And for Kronos or any of them. But when the cosmos is created, time is created in a certain yes. sense. Uh, um, the paradigm or the idea is not in motion or at rest. Correct. Okay, all right. I'll look, see. Um, <clears throat> you know, I have a friend of mine who has a camera, motion picture camera, and, and uh, he's studying, he's trying to study change. And so he did a very careful study of change. It wasn't good enough, so uh, he got another camera that was able to take 10,000 shots per second because he wanted to capture motion. <laughs> and in each one of these, uh, it was static. Mm. And so he knew what to do, not being a fool. So he got a more expensive camera to go uh, more shots per second because then he knew that he'd be able to see motion and uh, he was fired by the way on this job <laughs> but before he quit uh, or he was thrown out he said it looks like you can never see change if this model holds for the change must always occur in the space between the shots. Instantaneous. That's the instant moment. See, that's the instantaneous. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see. Uh, how do you account for change? then we don't experience it, we infer it by noticing the differences and they're successive. And that's real curious, like, uh, have you noticed how everything seems to change according to the way in which it uh, seems to have developed and grow? This is the problem of, you know, Nancy, she's in growing stuff and she expects an elephant ear to come out of a corn stalk because uh, that's the way she gardens. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I think she's doomed to disappoint. Well, she says there's no reason why you shouldn't have an elephant ear on a corn well, stalk. Well, you definitely have an ear. <laughs> I don't think an elephant ear. Oh. I think she would mind it. Get mad at her. I water. <laughs> That's <laughs> well, probably a, what happened. Donna, would you agree there's something curious about change? And that is, it's successive. Right. But if there's a sequence of things, the middle one doesn't jump out of order. Like there's a a certain measure of development as we proceed right? again and again and again. Well, where does the order come from? Like, would you agree in every successive moment there is something that has to continue to be the same and yet there has to be some difference in each? Well, what determines in each of these microseconds, nanoseconds, to keep the sameness going and drop the difference. 
but there has to be some principle behind it of order, must it not? Is it possible that in this interval, each thing behind that here is the order, the model? And therefore, whatever is going on in that order and model allows the proper change for growth and for dropping away, or generating something new and dropping something old. Is that correct? In some way, it has to take place here. That's the only place it can take place. Because that's where change occurs. Not here. These are all static. Is that right? It makes sense. And that's nothing. Because my friend, I told you, he was able to speed up the camera. He wanted to see if he could get into this and see more about this spot. And uh, so he got a faster and faster camera. It didn't work. So he's building a new one. He wants to see if he can get one now that will just focus on the gap. And so he built one, and he tried it out, and he, as well as all the equipment in the garage, disappeared. <laughs> the police said it was the problem of the gap. Don't fool around with the gap. <laughs> so fall into the gap. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Let's go back to this. What is he saying? Come on. What are we doing in the third hypothesis? then all change takes place here, in the instantaneous. So it's creation. Hey, this is creation. Every moment is creation. Something new emerges, something old drops away. It's taking place within this. So it's a continuous creation. Something comes out of nothing. Pierre. So Order, intelligibility. Is that right? Is that bad? No, no, no. So the line, there is no time in which anything can neither be moved nor stand still. No time. No time it's, is the gap. That's right. No time. There's no time. It's out of time. That's right. This is time. This click, 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 click. Therefore, it calls an instantaneous. The gap. It's the gap. Now, there, what's interesting is that there are philosophical systems that accept this as their basic way of understanding. Kashmir Shivism. This is Kashmir Shivism. That is, that the nature of reality is flashing continuously from the mind of uh, Buddha nature, as it were, right? which is continually flashes, only they have it from Shiva. Right? Continually flashes. And the gap, they have the gap. It's out of that. And um, what's what's interesting in Homer, you know, is that when he has to when he has to plan, when he has a real difficulty, Homer describes Zeus as uh, creating a beautiful thought, an image, a plan, by holding his mind between two thoughts. Not clever yeah. between two thoughts. And enough room for him to get in between two thoughts. <laughs> yeah. have, you, uh, have you done that? Not okay. yet. Get, get your colleague here. Right. There's enough room between two thoughts to take a peek at what's going on. I, have, I haven't been able to yet. No. <laughs> so look, come on. I have to go back to it. You see, what's flashing, what's flashing, oh, the sequences. Bing, 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 bing. In and out. In the blink of an eye. More, yes. Yeah. 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 Now we can line up all of the terms, like and unlike. Would you agree? All of these are going to be different, yet similar. 
So there has to be a likeness among them all. On the other hand, if you want to look at their difference, there's an unlikeness. Also, you can say that all of these have a likeness, and this is unlike, depending upon how you use your language. Right? You'll get all of the opposites. You'll line up all the opposites. Let's do it right from where we're at. Let's go further. And on the same principle? No. And on the same principle, when it passes from one to many, or from many to one, it is neither one nor many. It is neither in a process of separation, nor in one of combination. And in passing from like to unlike, or from unlike to like, it is neither like nor unlike, neither in a process of assimilation, nor in one of dissimilation. And in passing from small to great, and to equal, and vice versa, it is neither small, nor great, nor equal, neither in a process of increase, nor of diminution, nor of equality. Apparently not. All this, then, would happen to the one, if the one exists. Mm. Yes, certainly. Mm. What do you say we do it again? Okay. Somebody else want to read it? Um, give it a shot. Sure. <clears throat> and on the same principle, when it passes from one to many, or from many to one, it is neither one nor many. It is neither in a process of separation, nor in one of combination. And in passing from like to unlike, or from unlike to like, it is neither like nor unlike, neither in a process of assimilation, nor in one of dissimilation. And in passing from small to great, and to equal and vice versa, it is neither small nor great, nor equal, neither in a process of increase, nor of diminution, nor of equality. No process. It's a gap, no process, it's not continuous. Let's see if I can... Uh, Let us discuss the matter once more, and for the third time. If the one is such as we have described it, being both one and many, and neither one nor many, and partakes of time, must it not, because one is, sometimes partake of being or seer? And again, because one is not, sometimes not partake of being? Hmm. Yes, it must. And can one, when it partakes of being, not partake of it? Or partake of it when it doesn't partake of it? No, nah, no, no, no. Then it partakes at one time and does not partake in another. For that's the only way in which it can partake and not partake of the same thing. True. And is there not also a time when it receives being and when it gives it up? There's a time when it receives it and gives it up, right? It receives it and gives it up. Hmm. Wait, wait a minute. How can it sometimes have and sometimes not have the same thing unless it receives it at one time and again loses it? There's no way at all. But uh, would you not say that receiving being or, or usia is generation? Yeah. And losing it, destruction? Yeah. 
The one then, as it, uh, as it appears, since it receives and loses existence, is generated and destroyed. Hey, when the one receives it, it's generated, right? right? When the one receives it, then it's generated. When it receives it, And when it loses it, then it's destroyed. Huh? Now all we need to know is just one thing, and we can make a nice little model. Huh? And here we go. And being one and many, and being generated and destroyed, when it becomes one, its being the many is destroyed. Oh, when it's being one, well then, this is destroyed. Oh, when it receives it, then many is destroyed. Oh, by the way, uh, when the many receives it, ah, the one is destroyed. Back and forth. Oh, back and forth. Yeah. Oh. And being in one, one in many, and being generated and destroyed when it becomes one, uh, it's being the many is destroyed, and when it becomes many, its existence as one is destroyed. Huh. Wait a minute. Then it phases out alternately, right? When it's one, its existence as many is destroyed. When it's many, its existence as one is destroyed. Right? Either or. Hey, when it's becoming one and many, because it has to be separated and uh, combined, both, right, separated and combined. Ah. These are the processes. And when it becomes unlike, and like, it must be uh, assimilated and dis disassimilated, right? When it becomes one and unlike. So like and unlike. Mm -hmm. Well. Now, any change from any set of opposites is going to go through the same process. Hey, um, And when it becomes greater and smaller and equal, it must be increased or diminished and equalized. Right? Huh. Now the word is, it's not great and small, it's greater, right? It's, 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 uh,
Now we get the set motion and rest. Look at this, this is weird. Hey, when in motion, it comes to rest, and when being at rest, it changes to motion. You know, it must itself be in no time at all. What? When it's in motion, and comes to rest, or when it's rest and comes into motion, this transition, no time. It can't be in time. How's that? Well, it's impossible for it to previously be at rest and afterwards in motion, or previously in motion and afterwards at rest without changing. Yeah, of course, that's to change. But you know what? There's no time in which anything can be at once, neither in motion nor at rest. Remember, that's the key sentence. There's no time in which it can be both. Right? And there is no time in which anything can be at once, neither in motion nor at rest. Huh. Huh. Well, that's clever. And certainly can't change without changing. No, I say not. So when does it change? For it doesn't change when it's at rest or when it's in motion or when it's in time. No, no, it doesn't. Say, does this strange thing then exist in which it would be at the moment when it changes? Uh, what sort is that? The instant. For the instant seems to indicate a something from which there is a change in one direction or the other. For it, it does not change from rest while it's still at rest, nor in motion while it's still moving. But there is this strange instantaneous nature, something interposed between motion and rest, it's not existing in time, any time at all. Hey, it's into this and out from this, that which is motion changed to rest, and that which is at rest changes into motion. Yeah, it must be so. Then the one, if it is at rest and in motion, much change in each direction. But that's the only way in which it can do both. But in changing, it changes instantaneously. And when it changes, <laughs> it can be in no time. And at that instant, it will be in neither rest nor motion. No. And will the case not be the same in relation to other changes? See, great er process, small er. Not small, not large. Yeah. When it changes from being to destruction, or from not being to becoming, does it not pass into an intermediate stage between certain forms of motion and rest? Look at this. See, see he's adding, he's going a nice step there. That's the way he's doing it. When it changes from being to destruction, or from not being to becoming, See, when it's in this middle spot, it's not being to becoming. From becoming to not being. Mm -hmm. And a 
on the same principle when it passes from one to many or from many to one, it is neither one nor many. It's neither in the process of separation nor in one of combination. It's passing from like to unlike or from unlike to like. It's neither like or like. Hey, you know what? Notice what he's doing. So he's adding another dimension. Suppose we call this gap the one. And let's call all of these, which we label here, appearances or becoming. He's saying, you know what, you still need a process for in and out. Still need a process for in and out. Still need a process for in and out. Because uh, without that, without that, you don't have anything continuously moving through the third hypothesis. So, um, so on the same principle, when it passes from one to many, or from many to one, it is neither one nor many. It is neither in the process of separation nor in one of combination. And in passing from like to unlike, or from unlike to like, it's neither like nor unlike neither in the process of assimilation nor one of dissimilation, and passing from small to great nor to equal, and vice versa, it's neither small nor great nor equal, neither in the process of increasing or diminution, nor of equality, apparently not. All this then would happen to the one, if the one exists. So even when it passes from one to many and many to one, it's neither one nor many. Right? When it passes, see, when it goes through the process, it's neither one nor the other. <clears throat> it's neither one nor the other. Got <clears throat> instantaneous. See if we can put another way of putting it. Suppose we were to say that we've been wondering for a while about this curious word, intelligence. Right. One and many. Well, Is it possible, therefore, that going in and out, that's where all the change takes place, and it's not in time? And therefore, for guiding change, there must be this curious thing called intelligence. Well, wait a minute. Then these flashes, as it were, are the appearance, flashes of appearance of the emerging time. That's why we do not agree from what we've been taught. No one ever experiences time. It's all supposedly shots in your own in your own thinking and seeing. And it takes appreciable amount of time for your mind to register what it is you see and therefore everything you see necessarily is in the past, <coughs> right? Everything's in the past you experience. Agree? Mm -hmm. If it takes some time for you to see me, <laughs> if it takes some time, no matter how much it takes, it's still in the past, doesn't it? The actual event. The actual event takes time to register, does it not? Two sure. legs. Then no one is ever in the present experiencing we're, the present. We're always in the present. They're always in the past, aren't they? We're in the present. When you, whatever you experience, experience something that's in the past. 
Yeah, right. So then everybody's experience is in the past. They've never experienced the present in their life, have they? Yeah. Louder? I guess not. Yes. No, no, they don't. <laughs> well, then no one knows what the hell they're talking about when they say, get in the present. You're not now. They say, no, I tried. <laughs> I tried to jump in, but it keeps it. <laughs> right. So no one knows anything about what is. Agree? Chase it. This is all change. This is all change. Is that being then? Is this being? Because being is another word for intelligence. And it has a vitality. Hmm. So then all my experience then is is dead. Right? It's past. It's already past. Yeah. And the real life is between it. Is that right? Is that right? Mm. Well, you're not far away from intelligence, are you? No. That has to always be there. Thank God. Thank God? Okay. Which one? <laughs> the one that's doing this. Chronos, the one that's doing it. The process. Right? Oh. This is like Spanda Karikika, the Kashmir Shivism. So, do you find this curious? If this makes sense, right, the instantaneous flashing all the time and things coming in and out of it, and that can account for change and that can account for the intelligibility of things, Then this guy wrote this up, right, at 400 BC, but Kashmir Shivism didn't come into existence for another 800 years or more. Plagiarism. That's all it is. Yep. <laughs> it's all there. Hmm. So then the, the gap is not nothing. The gap ain't nothing. But on the other hand, it can't be something. It's got being and intelligence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so is there another principle involved there with the gap? Oh, I would think the gap is there another good. principle that's been not talked about here? Mm -hmm. More. Well, it's uh, evidently another principle is coming from this side that's mm -hmm. not been recognized yet. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. is this worth looking at again? Mm -hmm. Here? Especially yes. when you agree there are certain key sentences and you have to hold on to that. And if you do, then the other parts fit. But would you agree the key part also is here that any, pro <coughs> any process, anything getting greater or smaller, still presupposes a process. And if a process, must pass through the gap or instantaneous. Agree? All, all of the opposites, becoming like, becoming unlike, any kind of process. Ah. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> like suppose just for the fun of it, um, conditions. What if the conditions or the metaphysical uh, principles underlining Kashmir, Kashmir Shaivism, and you can see the same thing in some other systems, can be expressed with the third hypothesis? Okay, hold on. Um, what if the conditions or the metaphysical foundations
what are the metaphysical foundations for Judaism, Christianity, and Islamic thought are found in the fourth hypothesis? Would that be interesting? Yep. Hmm. Uh, before it took its historical form? Oh, well, what of the metaphysical foundations for for transcendentalism, that means, right, right, it doesn't touch, right, no point of touching, right, cosmos, right, whatever you want to call it, the divine, or any of that, it has nothing to do with us, it transcends us. By the way, what if that turns out to be the uh, fifth hypothesis? Would that be curious? Oh, wait a minute. the arguments against each of these hypotheses can easily be seen that would say would it not that all the arguments against these could equally be shown the denial of each. So both, both the creation of the metaphysics for all possible religions and their surrogates, as well as the arguments, the metaphysical arguments against each, was all worked out before they came into historical existence. Isn't that rather clever? Huh? Yeah. I thought that myself, that's why I thought I'd mention it. <laughs> yeah. hmm. Oh, then you can have fun, by the way. You can then go along the diagonals. You can make various comparisons. Oh, and if you want to be eclectic, you can say, well, there are some systems that combine various parts. Yeah, that's right. Various systems combine various parts, and you can say, oh, yeah, you got, you got a bit of two, and you got a bit of three, and once in a while you stick in five. Yeah, I understand what you're doing. Makes it a curious map, doesn't it? No. Can they be ranked... Can they be ranked hierarchically in terms of their integrity? No. Mm -hmm. No. Go Rank them hierarchically. No. And of course, the first is independent, and the tenth is independent. So there are really ten hypotheses. Okay.
Uh, uh, enough. Right. Is, is it true that somebody is writing or has written a work on exploring this? If they did, they had to get into some gap <laughs> and come out of it. So some people slip, you know when they say people slip through the cracks? <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. That's also called the sudden. Right. Sudden. Um, okay. There, one question. With this model, doesn't it presuppose that uh, that um, I guess like well, if the paradigm right is is nothing other than this unfolding, right? Wouldn't that mean that it's fixed? No. No. Just like, I remember uh, your friend Harry Dovidovich when he was crying the other last Friday night? Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's into painting and art, you know, guys who use brushes, colors, right? Yeah. And a friend of his was crying when he discovered there are just a certain number of colors. That was something, wasn't it? I don't recall. They said, yeah, it was limited. There only just a certain number of colors. So he was crying. <laughs> what? Does it bring tears to your eyes? No, the hell one. Okay. <laughs> Good answer. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I was wondering how that uh, Thanks. responded oh, to this question. Not, this is limited. Yes, it is limited. So are the numbers of colors. I'm pushing to say more than just that it's limited. Well, yeah, I was just wondering about the idea of if free will exists. Then. The idea of free will? I'm not against it. <laughs> if it exists. I haven't noticed with it. This, with this model. I haven't noticed it. I have a friend of mine that was sick, and I said, you're just stupid. You know, don't have free will? Get out of the bed. Right? It's free, too. What do you mean free will? Mm -hmm. you know, people have the will to do anything they want? Or... Yeah. Uh, no, just they have the free will to do anything that has no problems for them. <laughs> the, the, the idea, no, the idea that if this, given this model, how, what, like, how does fate and providence ah, bravo. work with this model? Oh. Is that the question I have? Mm. I'd ask the big question. <clears throat> um, providence is, and fate is cause and effect, of course. And, This model would show that you took the idea of providence. Here. Now remember, right? Providence literally means seeing video, right? That which you see before, right? So it's a kind of intelligence sees before, prior. But it sees what? It sees a good proceed. <clears throat> right, that's providence, right? So the idea of providence is that there must be something prior to intelligence that is a good that then is dispersed throughout creation. Mm -hmm. Agree? Well, that's okay. the idea of providence, just to make sure. Okay. All right. Well, um, this model would show where it is re where people restrict it. 
how people restrict it. 